Okay, so a little bit of <laughs> about what we're going to um, uh, mention today. We'll give you a brief tag runtime overview. Then we'll, we'll talk about some of the activities that the tag has been involved with, some of the, the projects that have come and presented in our meetings. Then we'll dive into what the working groups are doing in the TAG. We have three working groups, the IoT Edge Working Group, the Batch System Initiative Working Group, and the Container Devices Interface. And then we'll uh, talk about uh, some of the future things that we're thinking about in terms of work and, and how you can contribute, how to get involved. And finally, we'll talk about you know how to reach out to us and, and and how to start a conversation all right so what is tag runtime so i was just kind of curious about tag runtime uh, so i went over to chat gpt and um wanted to ask us like do you know what tag runtime is and as a matter of fact it did and he provided a pretty good uh description that uh, a few paragraphs so if you're interested in the natural language response, you can go there and, and find out a little bit more. Uh, but in, in essence, we do have a, a charter. Uh, so TAC Runtime is there to help uh, improve and, and, and people uh, engage with uh, the communities to, to help with the different uh, workloads in the cloud native ecosystem. What the, and these workloads can be latency sensitive workloads or the, like high performance microservices, or they can be batch type of workloads, or they can be low power requirement type of workloads like the ones you run at the edge. And again, everything in the cloud native e uh, ecosystem and, and contacts. And we work closely together with the CNCF TOC uh, we have TOC liaisons. Uh, Nikita is one of them uh, next to me. I'm one of the co-chairs, so we also have chairs, and we also have tech leads. So this is um, a slide that shows some of the logos of the projects that have actually presented in our meetings. So y as you can see, there's a wide variety of them. Uh, you have operating systems, you have runtime shims, you have projects that allow you to run workloads at the edge. So a wide variety of them. So we kind of decided to loosely categorize uh, these projects. So we have the general work workload orchestration type of projects like Kubernetes and Volcano. Uh, there's uh, also projects that allow you to run things at the edge. Then we have the more of the projects that that relate more to runtimes and VMs, and it, you can find there the Container D and Cryo. Additionally, the special purpose operating systems, uh, things like uh, Flatcar and Talos that help you run container images that uh, basically, uh, it's just a lightweight oper operating system that, that helps makes it easy for you to patch. Uh, then there's a serverless workload space, and Knative is one of the projects there that um, right now in incubation, uh, sort of an exciting space there. And, and there's a wide variety of projects in the MLOps, AI, machine learning, learning space. Um, I, there's a lot of excitement around uh, Knative, oh, sorry, um, the large language volumes. Uh, so some of the projects there are like uh, Open Your Cubatch, and uh, you have things like K-Serve that allow you to serve machine learning models. And then there, there's a working group uh, category. So now we'll talk about some of the activities. And oh, this doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, we got an overview of what TAG Runtime is, but let's see what the TAG has been up to. Uh, so we now have a shiny website of our own, thanks to the, the support from the CNCF. So if you head to tagruntime.cncf.io, you can find all information about the tag, obviously all our meetings, Slack channels, and so on. Uh, so we got this website done like last week or the week before, I guess. So it's very like new and young right now, uh, but we plan to add more information. Go ahead. Okay, no. okay. if you want to add something, please yeah, feel free. No. 
Um, so we plan to add more information around it, especially like what the working groups are up to, all the artifacts generated by the working groups, like white papers and so on, which we will cover later in the presentation. Uh, our hope is that we will probably get more contributors this way. Uh, I know like other tags are like probably more popular and have more folks, uh, but our hope is to kind of also get tag runtime, uh, like more contributors to tag runtime. Uh, and the newest and shiniest thing on the radar recently has been a proposal for a WASM working group. So WASM has been a pretty hot topic in the community recently, but there's never been a dedicated space for it. Um, and Heba, who's from Microsoft, uh, she recently got involved in the tag and she's been amazing with like driving engagement as well as starting new initiatives. Uh, so she proposed that maybe we should start a working group for WASM and we were like, heck yes, let's do it. Like, that sounds really cool. Uh, so there's a GitHub issue open, so if you like scan that QR code, you can uh, like, or just CNCF tag runtime or the 58 issue. Uh, just feel free to plus one if you're interested, or if you have specific ideas or opinions of what the working group should do, or ideas or topics that should be discussed there, like, please feel free to comment on the GitHub issue. I think I was like working on a draft charter for the working group, so this is like the right time if you have ideas that you want to include in the charter itself. Uh, and I just want to call out, like, Heva started getting involved maybe a month or so ago, I guess. And she's been phenomenal, like, amazingly, like, helping drive new initiatives like this and so on. Uh, so if you are interested, like, she, I, I don't think she was really involved in the specific runtime space before, but she's been involved in a lot of other CNCF projects. Um, so even if you're very new to the runtime space or if you are a veteran already, uh, and if you want to get involved or have a particular idea or topic, where you want to set up a working group or just a space where you can talk to others about it, uh, please feel free to reach out to us and be happy to chat more about it anytime. Yeah, and if you actually know someone who wants to get involved too, feel free to reach out to them and yep. they can reach out to us. Too. That also works. Um, so in the last year alone, like Ricardo said, we've had a bunch of projects present at our meetings. So just to talk a little bit about how we do our meetings, um, first of all, I just want to say like there's been such massive interest recently that we've had to, so like we had bi-weekly meetings before, but we had to like just schedule ad hoc weekly meetings and I think we might just like move it to a weekly cadence right now. So the interest's been great. Uh, so we have a bunch of projects present at our meetings, uh, like container runtimes related to Edge and so on. Um, and for example, like we we invite projects that are already CNCF projects in the runtime space, like ContainerD or Cryo, uh, or even Co, which was a sandbox project, or OPCR, which is the OPA Container Registry, uh, which is also a sandbox oh. project. And then we also invite projects that want to join the CNCF, right? So like maybe they are in the runtime space, they're already open source projects, uh, they are interested in joining the CNCF, but they're not quite there yet. So we ask them to present in our meetings up and just give them suggestions on how to improve um, things like how can they improve or like get more diversity for contributors from multiple companies or increase their adopters and uh, things like that. Like, so that's kind of one of the ways we engage with both CNCF and non-CNCF projects. Um, and uh, so one other like way just projects uh, present at our meetings is also if they're moving between levels. For example, uh, Cryo has applied for, Cryo and Keda both have applied for graduation, so they've presented at our meeting. And even Flatka has applied for incubation and to join the CNCF, so they presented recently as well. So we engage with projects when they want to move levels, and this is actually a great way to know what's really going on in the CNCF ecosystem as well. Uh, I wouldn't go into detail on like the past presentations, but one specific uh, project I wanted to call out was ClusterNet. Um, so I don't really recall when they applied for sandbox or incubation, probably moved to move levels, I guess, for incubation, right? That was around last year. Last year, yeah. yeah. So they uh, couldn't get through on the first try, but then based on the feedback from the TOC as well as tag runtime, they reapplied again, and this time it got through, right? So uh, they finally joined the CNCF too. Now, we just want to... Uh, like talk a little bit more about two specific projects. Uh, one is Flatcar and one, the other one is Keda, who presented at our meetings because they are also moving levels. So Flatcar has applied for incubation to join the CNCF. Uh, so if you're not familiar, so Flatcar is a Linux distribution for container workloads uh, with high security in mind and like low maintenance. But let's first try to understand what container Linux really is, right? And how does it really differ from regular Linux? Um, 
So first thing is that when we're talking about running workloads in containers, so all of the dependencies are kind of embedded within the container itself. So you don't really, you just really need to run the packages on the host that you need to run the containers themselves. So there's like a minimal distribution for containers. Um, and second is the focus of, on security, of course. So the partition, the actual partition that runs the operating system and hosts the operating system files is actually immutable. So any security threats that try to modify the operating system won't be really affecting you. Uh, then finally, it's about like automated updates. So um, uh, like, oh, and the way this updates works is it's basically atomic. So you can either have be updated or not be updated. And there's also like a provision to roll back uh, if your update doesn't go through. Uh, and finally, it's just more about the concept of nodes and provisioning, and it's more like a paradigm of like declarative configuration. So if you say your node is on version X, then it's on version X. And you also know like what CVEs are fixed in it, what bug fixes come with that version. Um, so overall, it's like just about op simplifying like your operations and keeping like, security and uh, scalability in mind. I won't go into detail into all of this. I uh, just want to call out a few things so that they do have an LTS channel of, uh, with an 18-month long support. Uh, there's baked-in GPU support. You can also run it in FIPS mode. Uh, they've been also working with other projects like uh, Fedora, Core OS, because both of them have uh, certain upstream projects that they both work with. Uh, one of the bigger things was uh, the cluster API support, uh, because it also involved adding uh, ignition as the provisioning mechanism. Uh, and there's a bunch of other stuff, like try, try to keep it quick. Um, there's also active support and integration with various platforms, including major cloud providers and Kubernetes installers. Um, I think one big thing, one major thing was also like service providers like Giant Swarm have uh, Flatcar as a base OS integration. So they have a PR, uh, PR number 911, which proposes Flatcar for incubation. We're also working on all the due diligence documents and checks right now. Uh, but if you'd love to show your support, or if you have questions or ideas, please feel free to comment on this PR. OK, so a little bit on uh, the project Kata that also presented, and they're applying for graduation. Some key statistics. and. Kata is, is a project that allows you to scale your deployments and jobs, and they want you to focus on more on the scaling and less on the really internals of the scaling, so make it easier for people to just scale based on metrics. But one of the things that they're doing is that they're adding more scalers. Uh, so these are the interfaces that allow Kata to uh, talk to something like Apache Kafka to like uh, AWS SQS or to a, metri a specific metric server and identify you know, whether a pod needs to scale up and down. So right now they have 50 plus of these scalers and when they apply for Sandbox, they had about 19 or 20. They're also thinking about adding production grade authentication, which is really important for real live production type of workloads. Uh, and they're adding support uh, to scale uh, your deployments to zero or pause auto scaling. It might be useful for edge type of workloads. Then they're also adding support for ARM, which is used in a lot of edge devices. And this is a diagram that shows the growth of the scalers of Kata. So you can see that from before Sandbox, they had maybe 15, and now applying uh, for graduation, they have about you know 55 plus or 60. So it's some of the things that you, it makes you think about some of the things that maybe the CNCF is looking for a project in terms of growth, um, in, in 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 adoption. Some other key statistics: they they've had a 42 uh, 280 percent growth of in the numbers of users. So that's 42 listed end users. And these are only the listed end users, so that means there's probably a lot more that haven't been accounted for. Additionally, about 12% of the Kubernetes uh, users are using Kata, so that's a pretty large number in growth from 4.7. Azure Container Services in the back end runs Kata, so this, that's the core of the service of, for a major cloud provider. And AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service, and OpenShift are creating a managed Kata version as a service. 
This is right now in preview. We expect that to happen pretty soon. So now let's dive into some of the working groups in the fall within the tag. And the first one is the IoT Edge Working Group. This working group has actually been interacting with a lot of different projects in the CNCF ecosystem. And there's a lot of excitement around WebAssembly. So you heard Nikita that we're creating a uh, WebAssembly or WASM working group. So some of the projects that they have been interacting with, with include like Super Edge, Cube Edge, K3S to uh, run Kubernetes at the edge. Uh, and there are some other projects like uh, was a match that allows you to instantiate uh, WebAssembly modules or run WebAssembly modules at the edge. Additionally, they're talking to some other uh, WebAssembly runtimes that are part of the Bytecode Alliance. And they're also integrating with this project called Acri that allows users to automatically detect devices at the edge. So for example, you could have a camera or a sensor at the edge and if that camera goes faulty, then this project would actually automatically detect it, or someone actually plugs in a new device, this project allows you to detect that device and, and come on online. Another exciting thing that the uh, IoT Edge Working Group is working on a Edge Native Principles white paper, or Applications Principle white paper. And this white paper talks about the similarities and the differences between cloud native applications and edge nat native applications. So you can see there are a lot of similarities in terms of observability. They can use things like open telemetry, so those are very similar. Uh, for manageability, both type of applications can run in containers, so either Kubernetes or maybe other orchestration system, but they're very similar in that aspect. Now for the differences, they're mainly focused about on, on aspects related to being in a constrained environment at the edge. Maybe they're in a box at, in a remote location. So sometimes the applications need to be more resilient. They need to be aware of that. They need to uh, check for network connectivity. Some of these network connectivity may not be uh, very reliable. Uh, sometimes you have high bandwidth or maybe low bandwidth. Uh, so, you cannot, you cannot actually rely on scaling up and down just like you do in a central application. So those are some of the things that the, the white paper talks about. I encourage you to read it if you want to find out more details. They also talk about these nine edge applications principles, and they're mainly focused on awareness by the applications uh, of things like hardware. I mentioned that before too, but it's general awareness of where they're located. Additionally, there's another aspect of being able to, to be aware of at scale management because you may have like hundreds if not thousands of different edge devices and they need, they need to be aggregated into a central location. So you can see there's projects like Cube Edge that help with that, right? So but these type of applications need to be aware of that. Cool, thanks Ricardo. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the batch system initiative working group. Um, so to give some context on why this working group was started, so you have like most of the users are right now trying to migrate their batch workloads to cloud native environments, right? But the level of support um, for batch workloads varies f across like the batch systems right now. And migration between them is really painful. So this working group was started to create a specification for batch workloads uh, so that to like other projects in the batch ecosystem today can engage between themselves and migration across batch, uh, batch systems is pretty uh, seamless. Uh, what they're currently working on though, um, uh, so what they're currently working on is a white paper. So this is a uh, work in progress uh, on the various batch scheduling tools available in the ecosystem today. So if you actually start looking at the CNCF landscape or other blog posts, it's just like a lot of projects out there and there isn't really detailed info on which project you should probably choose uh, if you're probably like a system architect and trying to decide which one uh, to pick up. Uh, so this is what the white paper currently looks at. For example, what are, what is, does the scheduling policy looks like, right? Is it priority based? Is it first come first serve? Is it user configurable and so on? Uh, is preemption supported? Is it single cluster, multi-cluster? What kind of SDK or API support does it have? Uh, it also looks at 
the project characteristics. Is it open source? It is a CNCF project. What level of CNCF project? What level of Kubernetes integration and so on? Uh, there's a Google Doc that's uh, already started to look into this. But if you're interested in contributing to this effort, I highly recommend reaching out to the Batch System Initiative Working Group. Uh, kind of on similar lines, there's also the CDI or the, or the CODs, Container Orchestrated Devices Working Group. Uh, so what they essentially work on is this thing called CDI or Container Device Interface, which is a specification uh, to make it easy to run third-party devices um, on different container runtimes. It also like looks into device plugins and how to make them easier to use. Um, sorry, let's go ahead in the interest of time. Uh, so the main thing that they've been working on is CDI support. So they're looking to add CDI support uh, in multiple container runtimes. So They've added it in Container D Cryo. Docker is currently in progress and discussions. Uh, and uh, the, the main thing that they're also looking to improve is the CDI implementation in the Kubernetes community. So it's mostly right now a bunch of device vendors, uh, runtime maintainers, and uh, Kubernetes SIG node contributors working on this. But if this is something that you're interested in, I also highly recommend joining this. Uh, Ricardo, what's next for Tag Runtime? All right, thank you. So what are, what are we thinking about doing next? Uh, uh, how you can help, and what are some of the activities that are, I think uh, will be helpful? So we want to recruit more contributors. <laughs> so we have uh, some co-chairs, we have some tech leads, but we need more. Uh, so there's a lot of, lot of uh, activity, there are a lot of projects. Uh, if you were on the keynote today, you can see the amount of projects that the CNCF is actually, um, you know, working with and and are tr trying to join the ecosystem. And a lot of excitement around the different technologies. So if you're excited about, you know, how to run cloud native workloads, um, yeah, we want to hear from you. Uh, just one quick thing I'd add on that point. So the TOC is also looking to move. Uh, so so the sandbox project, there's incubating projects, and. Uh, what we have right now is, I think, annual reviews only for sandbox projects, but we also want to include them for incubating projects as well. And we want to have tags involved in driving these. Uh, but we just really don't have enough people in tag runtime to help with the level of projects that we have in the runtime space. So we really, really need people if we want to uh, make the CNCF landscape scalable, really. Yeah. And, uh like she said, so, so traditionally the TOC has been doing these annual reviews of sandboxes and they've been having these meetings on a monthly basis, but now some of this work is actually going to be done by the tags and in, in, in the tag runtime is one of them, but there's a, a lot of other tags, so, so there will be lots and lots of uh, new incoming projects. And, uh, additionally, we want to uh, revisit some of the existing projects. Uh, one example of this, uh, uh, I think we mentioned before, the Container D presented in our meetings. And Container D is a graduated project, so they're very mature. They have you know, hundreds of adopters, but they, they, they're they working on new things, right? So they're, they're, they have a new component called RunWASI to run WebAssembly runtimes. Uh, so, just because they're in graduate state doesn't mean they stop, right? So we want to continue revisiting these projects and helping them and uh, engage them with the community. Additionally, we want to continue working on these very exciting project areas. So you have this MLOps uh, AI uh, space and, and, and Edge. So there's a lot of talk about LLMs now, lo large language mo uh, models, so that, that's closely c related to how you run these uh, workloads, machine learning workloads with these huge uh, machine learning models. And how, do you, how do you run them end-to-end -end in cloud native environments? Additionally, we want to continue reach, to reach out to runtimes. Uh, uh, you know, there's the container runtimes, but there are new runtimes related to WebAssembly. So, there could be a, something else in the future, so we just want to be out there uh, looking, looking out for, for new and exciting projects. Uh, we talked about WASM, we talked about IoT and Edge, that's another interesting area. There's also another area in, uh, related to Kubernetes tooling. So there, there are projects like help you to manage large fleets of Kubernetes clusters or manage 
applications that run on a large fleet of Kubernetes clusters. How do you place them in different locations, different data centers? Uh, how do you make it more redundant? Right? So a lot of tooling around that, and, and, and there's a lot of exciting projects there, like Cluster NATO, uh, Open Cluster Initiative, I think, uh, at K Armada. So continue to reach out to these projects. And finally, we want to continue working on, on the TAG uh, runtime website. So we have our first version up that we just show you, but uh, there's a lot more we can add there. There's a blog, session, blog section that we can develop. Uh, there's things like about page or just 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 little things and then continue continue uh, improving those. So with that, we'd like to thank you for joining. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us. We are on Slack, Twitter. I encourage you to join the Tag Runtime mailing list and the Tag Runtime Slack channel. Just ask any questions. We're happy to answer. Uh, we're happy to get you involved, to get you started, uh, to point you to the right direction. Uh, yeah, and, and, and we can go from there. Additionally, we have meeting notes. So if you want to go back and look at some of the videos of some of our previous meetings, you can also do so. So with that, we'll open it up for some questions. Thank you. Quiet. Yeah. Uh, I think I missed it. Is there a need for Friday meetings for the tech? Yeah, we meet uh, every first and third Thursday of every month. Uh, so we're thinking about actually expanding that because we've been getting a lot of uh, requests from different projects to present. So you saw, again, the number of projects that, that are part of CNCF. There are other projects that are not even part of the CNCF that are actually requesting to present. So we might actually increase it to like a weekly cadence, but, but we haven't done it yet. So. We also need more folks to help us out with uh, uh, contributions. For example, we need people who are interested in being a uh, meeting scribe to actually take notes uh, within the meeting. So. Was yesterday's tag runtime meeting recorded by any chance? Because it was a really good discussion. Yesterday's? Yesterday's tag runtime meeting. Oh, oh yeah, the we had a tag runtime meeting yesterday here, and unfortunately, there wasn't any recording. Uh, but it was more like an open discussion. I think some of you might have been there, and yeah, I think maybe for the next KubeCon, we might actually make it. A, a little bit more organized where we have an agenda. Uh, but in, in any case, it was really good and a lot of folks interested in the space and uh, folks that are not even in the CNCF, so some of, some of the folks actually work with the OpenStack Foundation, with the Kata Containers community, were there. So just kind of gives you an idea that, of the, the, the breadth of, of different projects and people interested. Well, thank you very much.